Hello everyone and welcome to Train Talk. Today we will be taking a look at all of the different passenger cars you can see on the rails of the United States today. There is a lot to cover here so this will actually be part one of a two-part episode. In the first part we will cover the basic types of passenger cars and in part two we will look at most of the major design styles of passenger cars such as Superliner, Amfleet, Multi-Level, Gallery Cars, and so on. With that said, the focus in this episode will be on the most common general types of passenger cars seen today, with a couple of types that are no longer used thrown in at the end. Now let's begin. The first and most basic type of passenger car is the coach car. Coach cars have seats for passengers to ride in. They are used in commuter, intercity and long distance train service and can either be used for regular fare, business class, or first class passengers. Coaches typically feature seats in rows along both sides of a central walkway that all run the length of the car. Usually, seats are placed two on each side of the walking aisle in a 2x2 two two configuration, but other configurations are also used such as 3x2 and even 2x1. Restrooms are often located at the ends of each car. Because coach cars are used for so many different types of services, there are many different styles of car that vary by railroad, car manufacturer, and service type. We will take a look at many of these different styles in part two of this episode. Sleeping cars have rooms often called compartments with seats that convert into beds that passengers can sit in during the day and sleep in overnight. These cars are used specifically on long distance overnight trains. In the past, sleeping cars were used by many different railroads, but today, Amtrak is the only one to use them in regular service in the United States. In Canada, Via Rail uses old refurbished sleeping cars from the 1950s on some of their overnight trains such as the Canadian. On Amtrak trains, there are three different sleeping compartment types to choose from. Roomettes are small rooms that feature two seats facing each other that turn into a bunk bed for two people. Family bedrooms are larger, with seating and bunk bed capacity for four people. Deluxe bedrooms have about the same amount of seating as a family bedroom, but only have a bunk bed for two people. However, deluxe bedrooms also contain their own shower and restroom, while roomette and family bedroom passengers share community bathrooms and showers. Dining cars are used to prepare and serve meals to passengers. They include tables and seating where passengers can enjoy their meal while watching the scenery out the window as well as a full kitchen for preparing food. Outside of tourist and excursion operations, Amtrak long distance services are the only trains in the United States to use dining cars. Via Rail also uses dining cars on their long distance trains in Canada. Similar to a dining car, cafe cars also provide food to passengers. Cafe cars do not have a kitchen but instead serve items that don't need much preparation such as snacks or other items that can be heated in a microwave. Food is sold from behind a counter located either in the middle of the car or at one end. Like dining cars, cafe cars also have tables and seating where passengers can enjoy their food. Cafe cars can be found on just about every Amtrak train, both long distance and inner city, as well as via rail trains in Canada. There are even some commuter trains that have cafe cars. Lounge cars come in many different styles, but they all serve the same purpose. They are used to provide passengers with an extra place to relax and enjoy the scenery while on board the train. Lounges have open seating in many different arrangements. In the past, lounges had everything from tables for card games to barber shops on board. Today, Amtrak is one of the only regular operators of lounge cars outside of tourist and excursion trains. Their cars, called sightseer lounges, are two-level cars with large windows for enjoying the scenery on long-distance trains in the western United States. Sightseer lounges also have a cafe on the lower level of the car.
The next type of car used on passenger trains doesn't carry passengers at all. Baggage cars are used for storing passenger baggage. They come in different styles, but on Amtrak, these are all single-level cars with two sets of double doors on each side of the car. In the United States, they are used on Amtrak long distance as well as some intercity trains. Well, that does it for most of the basic types of cars. Now let's discuss a few others as well as some that are no longer in regular use. Cab control cars are basically passenger cars that have an operator's cab at one end of the car for controlling the train in reverse. These are very useful on trains that travel shorter distances and turn around frequently. Cab cars are used on Amtrak intercity trains as well as just about every locomotive hauled commuter train in the United States and Canada. You can find out more about cab cars in my very first episode of Train Talk. Sometimes, passenger cars feature components from more than one different type of basic car. These are often called combination or combine cars. In the past, combines were most often cars that contained coach seating as well as a baggage section, but today they come in several different varieties and are most often used on Amtrak inner city and long distance trains. Some examples are coach baggage cars, coach cafe cars, sleeper baggage dormitory cars, and coach baggage cab control cars. Now we come to some types of cars that are no longer used in regular service. Some of them are still used as privately owned cars for excursions or cars on tourist trains or freight railroad business trains. The first of these is the Railway Post Office or RPO for short. RPO cars were used in the days of trains carrying the US mail. They had a complete letter sorting room and a full-time postal agent who would sort through all the mail and make sure it was dropped off at the correct destination. RPOs can be seen at many different train museums around the country. Parlor cars were a type of first-class passenger car that were used on some of the more important intercity and sometimes long-distance trains during the heyday of rail travel. They offered upgraded amenities such as comfortable, spacious seating and often food and beverages. Parlor cars are no longer used in the United States, but most recently, the Pacific Parlor cars served as a first-class lounge for sleeping car and business-class passengers on board Amtrak's Coast Starlight. These cars were retired in 2018. Dome cars, sometimes called dome lounges, are an old type of lounge car that featured a glass bubble on the roof of the car. A set of stairs would lead from the first level of the car to seating located in the glass canopy. These cars were advertised as providing great views for sightseeing. Some dome sections on dome cars covered only a small section while others extended almost the entire length of the car. Dome cars are used on many different tourist railroads and freight railroad business trains. Finally, we come to the observation car. Not only is the observation car the last on our list, it was also the last car on the train. In the days when travel by train was the way most people got from one side of the country to the other, railroads wanted their trains to have a complete, stylish, and finished look to them. Observation cars were typically lounge cars or sometimes coach cars that had a back open air platform or in later years a rounded off end. Today they are often used as private cars or on tourist trains or railroad business trains. Some railroads have converted other cars into a modern style of observation car by replacing one end of the car with a full length glass window. Well, that does it for this episode. I hope you had fun looking at the different types of passenger cars and that you'll join me for part two. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future episodes of Train Talk, please leave those in the comment section below. Also, be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more episodes of Train Talk in the future. For the latest channel notifications of posts and video uploads, be sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon to make sure the bell is activated. You can always stop by every Friday morning at 9am Pacific Time for a brand new video upload. And for more updates and additional content, be sure to check out all of my other social media pages. That's it for now. 
Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.